So we're going to have a look at the relationship between Mach number and CAS and flight level using the CR3. So we've got CAS and PA over here in this window. CAS calibrated airspeed over pressure altitude or flight level. Mark is displayed on this Mark number index there on the Mark scale. And the only variables that we need to convert CAS to Mark is PA or pressure altitude. It's the only input. So for me to figure out my mark from my CAS, I need to only know my PA. If I was, for example, at 30,000 feet down here, that's flight level 300, and I was doing 300 knots indicated, or CAS of 300, say at 30,000 feet, then simply lining up 300 on the CAS over 30,000, or 30 on the PA, flight level 300. Up here then on my mark scale, you can see I've got a value of about 0.79, just under 0.8 there. If we zoom in a little bit, you can see that's about 0.79, let's call that. So that just tells me that if I'm doing 300 knots at 30,000 feet, that is equivalent to a mark ratio of 0.79. Now that is only going to occur for that particular CAS level combo. If I was to take 30,000 feet at a different CAS, if I was to say be doing 350, then obviously with more CAS I'll be doing more mark. So that's over 0.9, that's 0.91 for 30,000 feet doing 350 knots, but at 30,000 feet doing 300 knots, it's just under 0.8, they're 0.79. But you can see that if I change my CAS for the same level, then my mark will change, but also if I change my level for the same CAS, if I was to look at, say, 300 knots down here at 25,000 feet, that's the same CAS now, but at 25,000 feet, that's less mark. So at 300 knots CAS but at flight level 250 that's only about mark 0.72 whereas remember when we were doing that at 30,000 feet that was more like mark 0.79 and as we go faster and faster and I bring 300 knots around here to 35,000 for example or 350 that's now mark 0.87 and eventually 300 knots at 40,000 feet would be nearly mark 1 and we would have exceeded the aircraft's MMO remember the 727's MMO is only 0 0.902. So an aircraft climbing at a given indicated, holding a fixed CAS, say 300 knots, down here at 20,000 feet, 300 knots doing about 0 0.65, 300 knots at 25,000 feet, about 0 0.72, 300 knots at 30,000 feet, as we started with there, about 0 0.79, etc., and so on as you go up, eventually overspeeding the mark. So what happens then is that mark changeover, we swap, and we'll hold mark, and mark will be our reference now. And if you hold 0.79 then, you'll see that increasing altitude is going to give you less and less CAS. So here at 30,000 feet, 0.79 was giving us 300 knots. But now at 35,000, 0.79 is only giving us about 268 knots. And at 40,000 feet, only 240 knots. And see, as you go higher and higher and higher, at 50,000 feet, barely 190 knots. And as you lose CAS, the ultimate consequence of that would be obviously a stall. And so the big problem with mark on climb is that if you allow your CAS to decay too far with a constant mark, then you'll eventually stall. Of course, you can't bring your mark up too high either, otherwise you exceed MMO. You will eventually get to an altitude where MMO will coincide with the stall. In other words, you'll be doing simultaneously an airspeed as low as sustainable without stalling, but correspondingly a mark number as high as allowable without exceeding MMO. And that point where the two speeds coincide, when MMO puts you on the stall, effectively, is what was known colloquially in the early days as coffin corner. And even still, we take that term coffin corner today to just represent this corner of the flight envelope where you're simultaneously on the point of overspeeding while stalling. So that hopefully then just outlines that relationship for you there between CAS level and mark.